Hello, hello! Welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how to configure Microsoft 365 application updates via Microsoft Intune. Microsoft Intune can manage updates of applications as well, but honestly, for the standard Win32 applications, the update management is a little bit complicated. Uh, that's the reason why organizations usually choose some third party service or solution in general to manage updates of applications. But there is a built-in policy that can manage updates of Microsoft 365 applications that you can simply configure and have updates configured and enforced for the Microsoft 365 applications deployed in your organization. And this is the this is the video that uh, or this is the topic of the today's video. When we want to configure Microsoft 365 updates, we go to Devices, Windows, Configuration Profiles, and we create a new profile here. The platform for this profile will be Windows 10 and later and the profile type will be settings catalog. We can name the profile however we want. So I will name it probably something like Microsoft 365 up updates. And here we add settings from the catalog. So we scroll down to Microsoft Office 2016 machine and here we see a subfolder of updates and here are all the policies that you need to configure the built-in update mechanism for the Microsoft 365 applications. As I've already mentioned, update management for applications via Intune is quite complicated but that's not the case for the applications that have the, its own built-in update mechanism. And that's the case also for the Microsoft 365 applications. So we are not going to deploy new versions of Microsoft 365 applications. We are not going to deploy new executables or full updates via Microsoft Intune. We are just going to configure the built-in update management that is available within Microsoft 365 applications. And that's what these settings that we see here on the screen do. So first we have delay downloading and installing updates for Office. Let's configure that. Don't install extension for Microsoft Search in Bing. Let's configure that as well. Don't install Microsoft Teams. Let's configure that. Enable automatic updates. Obviously, that's the most important uh, setting actually. Hide option to enable or disable updates. Yeah, we definitely want to control that. Hide update notifications, yeah. Then there are some settings that are probably not necessary. Uh, so I will skip those. And let's go to update channel and update deadline. These are the most, I would say, important settings that you should configure. Of course, you can choose your own settings here and for instance, don't configure some of these settings or on the other hand, configure more settings but I usually recommend configuring these that I have just selected. Let's talk about the specific settings that we have available. Update, update date, uh, deadline configures the, sets the deadline until when the updates must be installed. And must be installed means also including restart of Microsoft 365 applications because most of the updates of Microsoft 365 applications require actually the applications to be restarted. So you need to close the apps and uh, start the apps again for the update to be actually applied on your devices. And that's also what's configured by a uh, deadline policy here. My general recommendation is set it to two days because two days give users enough time to finish the work they need to finish so it doesn't interrupt their work and is not too annoying for end users but on the other hand it's still pretty strict in terms of applying potentially also security fixes for your applications so two days is usually the, um, the good recommended value 
Of course, you can change it however you want. So I've seen some organizations that, that set it to seven days. That's fine as well. But don't set it more than uh, for, for more than seven days because then um, you are delaying the updates and you may create a security risk for your organization if the updates actually fix some security vulnerabilities that might be misused or abused by threat actors. So let's keep it two days. Then we can set update channel. The default value is current channel. I usually recommend keeping it uh, on the current channel for the standard broad population of uh, your users. But there are more options available here in the drop down menu. You can change it to current channel preview. Current channel preview is pretty much the same as current channel. So the updates technically are the same. Uh, you just receive the updates sooner than uh, the users or devices that are on current channel. I mentioned that current channel is usually recommended for your standard users. So current channel preview could be, for instance, your IT department. So that IT department gets the uh, update sooner than your regular users so that uh, the IT department can get familiar with what's new in the update or what's potentially broken in the update before it reaches to uh, the rest of your employees. Then we have monthly enterprise channel, uh, which installs the updates once per month. Because current channel doesn't have a strict schedule like once per month, like for instance, for Windows updates that are released every second Tuesday of uh, each month. Uh, current channel gets updates more often. It can be even like multiple updates per week. Uh, monthly enterprise channel changes this behavior so that updates are received once per month. Then we have semi-annual enterprise channel, which configures updates to be installed twice per year. This is usually for large enterprise organizations that want to have it strictly under their control. They don't want or need the latest features available, but they want to be on the most stable version of Office um, if possible. So that's the typical scenario for installing this semi-annual enterprise channel. If you decide to use semi-annual enterprise channel for your regular users, then you should use again the preview version of semi-annual enterprise channel for typically your IT department or some test users that will evaluate the updates before the updates are released to end users. And the last option here is beta channel. These are beta versions of Office that's usually not recommended for anyone except for really some test devices or test users. Beta channel is definitely not recommended for any production devices, any production use. But like I've said, I usually recommend uh, the default value, which is current channel, which is fine for most organizations, most users, most use cases. But if you need to change it and want to have some type of delayed updates, you definitely can uh, choose a different option from the drop down menu. Then we have the option to hide update notifications. Um, if you enable this setting, it means that users will not be notified that there are updates available that are pending, for instance, um, a pre-start. I would leave this configuration completely up to you. Uh, so it, it depends if you want to let your users know that there are updates available for Office applications or not. So I will probably keep it disabled. Height option to enable or disable updates, that's something that should be definitely enabled, which means that users will not be able to change the status of automatic updates for Office applications, because that's the goal of this policy. We want to control it centrally. We want to enforce it for all users, for all devices, and that's why it should be enabled. Because then, when it's enabled, it means that the users cannot disable updates. Enable automatic updates 
is the primary reason of having this policy configured because we want to enforce automatic updates of office applications. Then you can choose if you want to install or not, in, uh, not to install Microsoft Teams. That's Teams is the standard productivity tool that you probably already use unless you use some other third-party communication tool for your employees. Uh, if you use Teams, you should definitely install it along with Microsoft Office. So this policy should be disabled. On the other hand, if you use some other tool or service for collaboration and communication for your employees, then it's probably worth disabling uh, installation of Microsoft Teams which means you technically enable this policy that disables installation of Microsoft Teams because you probably don't need Teams if you use a third-party tool. Don't install extension for Microsoft Search in Bing. Yeah, I usually recommend that. You don't want the extension usually installed. And delay downloading and installing updates for Microsoft Office. I usually recommend keeping it disabled because you or organizations usually should not need to delay updates. The updates should be available and installed as soon as possible. But if you have a specific need for delaying updates of Office applications, you can enable it here. When you enable it, it creates a new configuration option here, which says the number of days for what do you want to delay the updates. So by default, it's one day. So the updates will be delayed for one day. You can change it. Like I said, I usually don't recommend enabling this. So I will change it back to disabled. Then we can go next, next, and choose the assignment of this policy. You can assign it to specific groups or to all users or all devices. I choose all devices. I want this policy to be applied to all devices that are enrolled to Microsoft Intune. Click next. And last page is just the review of this setting. So we see the settings here. That's what we have configured. And we also see the assignment here. It's all devices. You can click create and click refresh here and see that the policy is available and is assigned. So that's all for Microsoft 365 up update management via Microsoft Intune. I hope you liked the video. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Share the video or my channel in general with your colleagues, with your friends, if you feel like it might be useful for them as well. In the meantime, you can also follow my weekly newsletter in the form of podcast on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts platform. I summarize everything that happened in the previous week in the world of IT and cybersecurity in the podcast. And also don't forget to follow my cybersecurity roadbook, my personal LinkedIn profile and Twitter profile where I usually regularly publish some tips and tricks, links, about interesting information, something that you should not miss. That's really all from my side for today. I'll see you next time.